Greetings, respected viewers. I am George from Ireland. I'm going to read uh, Endymion by John Keats. Um, and this is just the uh, introduction. Um, it's a very long poem, over 4,000 lines long, divided into books, four books of roughly 1,000 lines each. So um, it's based on this ancient Greek myth he's a shepherd in this one but there are various versions of it is he a hunter or a king or an astronomer and where in Greece does, does he supposedly live it's debatable but he's fallen into a deep sleep anyway we don't get into that um, uh, in the um, introduction so I shall read this this preface to you uh, by John Keats and then just discuss it a little bit Endymion by John Keats a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness, but we'll still keep a quiet bower for us as we sleep, full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing. <laughs> Sorry. And therefore, on every morrow wreathing, a flowery band to bind us to the earth, spite of despondence, of inhuman dearth, of noble natures, and of gloomy days, of all the unhealthy and the earth darkened ways, made for our searching, yes, in spite of all, some shape of beauty moves through the pall, from our dark spirits. Such the sun, the moon, trees old and young, sprouting a shady boon for simple sheep, and such are daffodils, with a green world they live in, and clear rills that for themselves a cooling covert make against the hot sun and mid-forest break, rich with a sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms, and such too is the grandeur of their dooms. We have imagined for the mighty dead an endless fountain of immortal drink pouring unto us from heaven's brink. So that's just uh, the first little bit, roughly uh, 20 lines of um, his poem. Uh, so... The, the, the opening couplet is very well known. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases ever. Um, so we're going to find out what this, what this thing of beauty is. He was part of the um, Romantic movement. I'm trying to think when he was born. If I got it right, 1794 uh, in London, into a middle-class family. His father um, uh, was an ostler, if I got that right, or an, an innkeeper, that's it. But there were quite a few horses there. Um, so he had some family money he wasn't aware of, but we don't get, we're going to his life too much. So, um, back, uh, back to, um, the poem. Uh, anyway, what do I like about it? It's musicality, uh, it's rhythm, it's celebration of nature. And, um, the romantics were into that, appreciating, uh, the simplest things in life. And that's the way the word, um, simple came into it. Um, and yes, it's on a classical theme but it's not um, overlaid with uh, classical allusions because a previous generation of poets, the Augustan poets, they, they bore their erudition heavily and um, Keats did not. So he was a polymath. Um, he was uh, an apothecary. We now call that a pharmacist. Considering becoming a doctor, we could, you could upgrade to that in those days. Um, okay, it will never pass into nothingness. So this beautiful thing is eternal. What is it? So much beauty, especially the natural world, is ephemeral. Um, but we'll still keep a bower for us whilst we sleep, as in a, a, a tree house. That's what a bower is. Um, uh, and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing. He often mentions sleep for some curious reason in his poesy. I wonder why. Did he have insomnia? But there's about a somnolent shepherd, so this is foreshadowing here. Therefore, on every morrow we are wreathing. Morrow can mean tomorrow, but I think in this case it's it's um, uh, morning. We are wreathing a flowery band um, to bind us to the earth. So like a daisy chain, I was the best to suggest bigger flowers. Think, would you wear it as a wreath like that? But no, somehow being tied to the ground with flowers, and what are our connotations of flowers? One of the loveliest things around, aromatic as well. And remember, they couldn't make perfumes quite so easily. And um, obviously we experience winter these days. But uh, in, the early, in the early 19th century, it was winter. You knew about it because, well, you had to have a fire inside. We didn't have street lighting. Well, apart from the bigger cities, we didn't have proper winter clothing. So they, they really, the seasons made a much bigger difference than they do today. Um, spite of despondence of inhuman dearth, um, so 
he often contrasts the um, the frailties of mankind with the splendor the generosity the magnificence uh, of nature and he's doing it here so people feeling low and it's, this is the sort of time where we need our spirits to be bucked up this might be just the tonic of uh, inhuman dearth um dearth that the lack of something is almost death of noble natures and of gloomy days so um we don't have um enough of those things gloomy days and could be in either sense since he's talking about nature um of all the unhealthy and uh, darkened ways um now i'm not sure does he talk about ways as in paths or uh in um uh, modes of life perhaps both made for our searching yes in spite of all some shape of beauty moves away the pall so uh despite the melancholy aspect of night and uh, of life all our sorrows nature is what is going to uh bring us happiness um a pall is um can be like a cloud or or anything which um causes you uh, lasting grief uh, move away the pall from our dark spirits so there's a contrast of dark and light that's a theme that runs through this uh, short poem such the sun the moon trees old and young sprouting a shady boon and moon is particularly uh, pertinent since Endymion is is um, the lover of C Selene or Selene we might pronounce it as in goddess of the moon um, f uh, sprouting a shady boon for simple sheep now boon the only boon I know as in is it meaning a blessing but perhaps there's some uh, meaning forgive my other meaning as in uh, some common noun excuse my ignorance um, uh, for simple sheep and such are daffodils um, so it's even nice to the ovines um, with the green world they live in and clear rills rills being, being streams so uh, living around London a lot of the streams were filthy they were open sewers so perhaps that's why he would have been especially appreciative of clean water and he very much liked going and walking around the countryside and composing poesy which would be a pian to uh, the, the splendor of flora and fauna that for themselves a cooling covert make against the hot season so the streams make a cooling covert well uh, i suppose they do because they carve their path through the through the rocks uh, but this is personification covert being some hidden or covered area against as opposed to against but meaning the same obviously for the scansion and a mid forest break which would be like a clearing in the middle of the forest rich with the sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms so um savor the uh, aroma there and so, such too is the grandeur of the dooms um we have imagined for the mighty dead so he's talked about how uh, impressive and how delightful nature is um and then this elysian home for people who've died doom not being uh, such a negative thing here all the lovely tales that we have heard or read an endless fountain of immortal drink pouring unto us from heaven's brink so uh, hinting at the uh, greek idea of the elysian fields that's what people were supposed to have because being a quite dry rocky country they thought um that the afterlife if you if you'd behaved virtuously was to live in a place uh, a land of plenty a land full of green uh, where you didn't need to work food was provided because you've got to remember in ancient times getting enough to eat because it was certainly not something you could take for granted anyway that is my pennies worth interpretation of endymion sometimes i think it's a mistake to try and understand it too much just to read it and to and to um savor it i think this one is sometimes best heard whispered a thing of beauty is a joy forever its loveliness increases it will never pass into nothingness but will keep a bower for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing I like that all right toodaloo